Good morning. My name is Barbara Sanders, and I serve as Whitworth as the interim provost. Welcome to Whitworth's 123rd commencement ceremony for graduate programs in education, in business, and in theology. This is an important day for these graduates, celebrating their accomplishment and the commitment of Whitworth's faculty and staff. On behalf of the faculty of Whitworth, University, I extend to graduates my heartiest congratulations. To parents, to spouses, to children, and to dear friends of the graduates, I welcome you to Whitworth University, and I hope that you will enjoy celebrating this important milestone with your graduate. In addition, I offer a special welcome and recognition to our trustee, Mr. Ken Roberts, who led us in this morning. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful day for a grand celebration of these students' many accomplishments. I'd now like to introduce Dr. Dennis Sterner, the Dean of the School of Education, Dr. Tim Wilkinson, the Dean of the School of Global Commerce and Management, and Dr. Noel Wiersma, the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, who will now introduce their faculty. Good morning, it's my pleasure to introduce the faculty for the graduate programs in education. When I call your name, would you please rise and remain standing? Uh, Dr. Roberta Wilburn, Associate Dean and Director of Graduate Studies in Education. Uh, Dr. Krista Crotty. Mr. Stephen Gady. Mr. Spencer, Spencer Granger. Dr. Kevin Hyde. Ms. Carol Holler. Dr. Doug Jones, Dr. Jay Lau, Ms. Sharon Neville Mitchell, Dr. Allison Olsendam, Dr. Catherine Picanzo, Dr. Corey McKenna, Dr. Ron Crossan, Dr. Barb Sanders, Dr. Flint Simonson, Dr. Debbie Tully, Mr. Ron Hussey, Ms. Ann Wilcox, Dr. Betty Williams, would you join me in thanking this group of faculty? And the faculty in our Master in Teaching program, Dr. David Cherry, Director. Can <laughs> you hold your applause? <laughs> Dr. Janine Vera, Mr. Dave Hosberg, Ms. Paula Gibson Smith, Ms. Agnes Vernon, and Ms. Sylvia Smith. And we thank you as well. It's my pleasure to introduce the faculty of Graduate Studies in Business. Our Director of Graduate Studies in Business, Mr. John Hengish. Dr. Rob Button. Dr. Todd Friends. Dr. Craig Pancamp. Dr. Margie Lashaw. And Mr. Eric Sartell. Good morning. It is my pleasure to introduce the Reverend Dr. Timothy Dolan, Director of the Master of Arts in Theology program and the following MA Theology faculty. Dr. Keith Beebe, Dr. Jonathan Mu, the Reverend Dr. Jerry Sitzer, Dr. Jeremy Wynn, and Dr. Dr. Karen Heller. Please join me in thanking you so much. Would you please rise for the invocation? Almighty God, as we gather here today, we honor and praise you as the source of all creation. Hallowed be your name. We thank you for this day and for the opportunity to celebrate the accomplishments of the graduate students gathered for this ceremony. Thank you for their desire to gain new knowledge and skills to serve children, young people, and adults. Thank you for the provisions that sustain each of these students throughout their respective programs. And thank you for all the people who walked alongside them through the many months of classes, examinations, projects, and internships that it took to get to this wonderful day of commencement. We ask your blessing on these proceedings and on each person here today. 
Encourage those who will speak to us and open our hearts to hear the messages that they bring. May all that is said and done here today glorify your name and bring honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Joshua 1 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. John 14 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. I am honored to introduce our speaker for today, President Beck Taylor. In 2010, Dr. Taylor was appointed as the 18th president of Whitworth University. He came to Whitworth after serving as dean and professor of economics for the Brock School of Business at Sanford University in Birmingham, Alabama. Prior to his appointment as dean, Beck served as the associate dean for research and faculty development for the Hanford School of Business at Baylor University, where he was also the W. H. Smith Professor of Economics. After earning his undergraduate degree from Baylor with majors in economics and finance, Beck was employed as an analyst for Anderson Consulting in Houston, Texas. He went on to earn his master's and his PhD in economics from Purdue. After returning to the faculty at Baylor, Beck received the Young Researcher Award from the Hanford School of Business in 2000 and was subsequently named the first holder of the W.H. Smith Professorship in Economics. In 2002, he was appointed as a visiting scholar by Harvard University and spent one year in residence at Harvard Graduate School of Education pursuing research interests. In 2005, he was named a Baylor University Outstanding Professor for his research accomplishments. As a scholar, Beck has published more than two dozen studies in economic journals such as the Review of Economics and Statistics, the Journal of Labor Economics, the Journal of Human Resources, and the Journal of Money, Credit, and Banking. These publications are notable. But President Taylor's greatest passion is his collaborative interdisciplinary research to publish in the areas of health and child developmental psychology. His research has been cited in testimony given before the U.S. Congress, and the California State Assembly has been referenced in many publications, including the New York Times, the Boston Globe, the Christian Science Monitor, and Chief Executive Magazine. As I have had the opportunity to work closely with Beck this year, I have been so impressed by his deep commitment to Christ, by his passion for academic excellence, and for his enthusiasm for Whitworth's mission and its students. President Taylor, it is an honor to have you with us today, and we are so very grateful for your leadership as we live courageously into a bright future. Please welcome Dr. Taylor. Well, good morning. It's wonderful to be here this morning. The Lord has blessed us with a beautiful day. Hopefully the rain will continue to hold off for us. Um, I'm deeply honored that you would have invited me to speak on this very important day in your lives, graduates. Congratulations to you on your wonderful achievements. It's been my honor to serve you as Whitworth's president during your time here, and I can't think of a more exciting opportunity than to address you this morning after so much accomplishment, so much effort. So congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Sanders for your lovely introduction. Many of you know that Dr. Sanders has served this past year as Whitworth's interim provost while the university searched for its next chief academic officer. The good news is that we found that person. The better news is that Whitworth will continue to benefit from Barb's leadership as she leads our School of Education next year as interim dean. Would you please join me in thanking Dr. Sanders for her great service to Whitworth University. Also, today marks the last graduate commencement that Dr. Dennis Sterner will officiate as Dean of Whitworth School of Education. Dean Sterner has served as Whitworth's first and only Dean of its School of Education, serving as Dean for 22 years and for three years before that as a faculty member and department chair. Dennis's run as Dean has been truly remarkable. In education graduates, 
Your degrees are held in such high regard in large part because of the contributions of Dean Sterner. After a brief and well-earned sabbatical, Dr. Sterner will be promoted back to the faculty to continue his vocation to nurture the next generation of education leaders for our state, for our country, and indeed for the world. Would you please join me in thanking Dennis Sterner for his leadership? Well, tomorrow I will officiate Whitworth's undergraduate commencement ceremony, a time to celebrate an important achievement for our graduating seniors and the culmination of significant efforts in reaching their educational goals. But for all of you, I dare say, today's graduate commencement ceremony most certainly honors your uncommon commitment to furthering your knowledge and expertise in ways that have required great sacrifice, not only on your part, but also from your loved ones. For many of you, homework and projects were completed by sacrificing precious evening and weekend time with friends and family. For most of you, your graduate education has come at the expense of not doing something else that would have undoubtedly paid you more in immediate dividends. But for all of you, this achievement represents your admirable commitments, not only to the life of the mind, but also to leadership, service, and professional development. Graduate degrees are not easily earned. Only one in 10 Americans has earned a post-baccalaureate degree. So you have good reason to be proud of yourselves as we are proud of you. You inspire us, Whitworth staff and faculty, to strive even harder to live out our callings to education and to this place called Whitworth. Your investments of time and energy inspire us to invest even more of ourselves into serving you and to serving the students who will come after you. And your sacrifices remind us of the value of our own sacrifices as we co-labor together to faithfully live out Whitworth's enduring mission to equip graduates to honor God, follow Christ, and serve humanity. So graduates, thank you for those important gifts and congratulations. In today's chaotic world, peace, it seems, is in short supply. Our minds immediately go to places around the globe, like Syria and the Korean Peninsula, for examples of how peace, or even its possibility, has been seemingly scrubbed out of existence by makers of war and conflict. Closer to home, unconscionable and horrific acts of violence tear through the crowded streets of Boston, and perpetrators of evil steal our collective innocence in places like Newtown, Connecticut. But the absence of peace can take many forms, perhaps not nearly as dramatic. And conflict can appear in many contexts, some more subtle than others. When the public trust in our elected officials yields to skepticism and mistrust, peace is sacrificed. When the marketplace seems to value profits over people, peace is lost. When our education system fails to meet the needs of all students, or fails to provide access to quality education to those who need it most, peace seems far off and elusive. And when, as the body of Christ, we trade in ridicule, dissension, and division, rather than in affirmation, grace, and unity, the gift of peace that Jesus speaks of in John 14 is rejected. And together, our hearts turn to fear and to trouble. Friends, we have many responsibilities as educated citizens. Our education, your educational attainment that we celebrate this day, is not meant to elevate you or any of us above others, or to be lorded over those who won't ever wear the master's hood or don doctoral regalia. But our education requires of us certain things, things that we may be uniquely gifted and prepared to offer society as educated persons. To those to whom much is given, much will be required. I think one of the requirements, one of the expectations of education, educated persons is to be peacemakers. Before we dive deeper into what I might mean, what it might mean for us to be chronic perpetrators of peace, let's examine first what we mean by peace. When Jesus in John 14 says, peace I leave you, peace
peace I give to you. Jesus employs the word shalom. Although the word shalom is often translated as peace, as it is in this section of scripture, its meaning runs far deeper. Shalom is a Hebrew noun that captures the ideas of wholeness, of completeness, perfection, prosperity, and yes, peace. The word captures the divine intent for creation. So when Jesus promises to leave us with shalom, his intent is to equip us to participate in, to perpetuate, to promote, and indeed to help restore the Creator's ultimate intent for creation. That is, to uniformly and unwaveringly unify all things, to center all things in the Creator who sustains us. This idea is supported when the Apostle, Apostle Paul writes to the Colossians in chapter 1, verse 20, saying, Through Christ, God is pleased, was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. In receiving the gift of shalom, our responsibility is then to perpetuate it, even when the world seems unable to receive it. This concept of restoration is most easily seen when we examine a closely related Hebrew word, shalem. The Hebrew word shalem, built off the same Hebrew word stem as the noun shalom, means to repay in full, to make restitution, to restore, and to make peace. Crudely, then, as receivers of the gifts of shalom, we are to shalem, to help restore that which we have been given. In other words, as people of peace, we do peace. Or in the words of Jesus from his Sermon on the Mount, found in Matthew 5, blessed are the peacemakers, or the peace doers, for they are God's children. So to bring us full circle then, to be peacemakers, which is my charge to you today, graduates. In order to be peacemakers, you are to be restorers. Restorers of what, you may ask? Restorers of peace, certainly. But what are the ingredients of peace? I would suggest today that a good place to start as we build a recipe for peace would be Micah 6.8. When the prophet speaks of what is required of all of us, to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God, to restore justice, to restore mercy, to restore coherence with God, three things that a peace-starved world could certainly use more of today. So how have your experiences as graduate students and the accomplishments we celebrate today prepared you to be peacemakers, to be restorers of justice, mercy, and love. To answer that question, we need only look toward those fields to which you have been called, to education and counseling, to business and to ministry. For those of you who are receiving degrees today in education and counseling, the need for peace, the need for restorative justice, mercy, and godly coherence in our educational system could not be more apparent. Educators, you are doing Christ's work when you care for and nourish intellectually the youth of the world. Christ reminds us in Matthew 25 that the service and care we provide for our children, the least of these, is service and care provided to Christ himself. Let the little children come to me. Jesus admonishes us in Matthew 19. Teachers, you are Christ's light to the world as you light the lamp of learning for your students. As you provide access to transformative education for those who deserve opportunities to develop and use their God-given gifts and abilities. Educators, you are agents for Christ's love, justice, and mercy. God is concerned with your life's purpose and mission. Education is among the most restorative of our social goods, so wage peace. In my former role as dean of a business school, one of my favorite things to do was to lift up in the face of increasing scrutiny and derision those business leaders who saw their activities as living out 
true calling or vocation, who saw their organizations not merely as accumulators of profit, but as agents for the common good. The creation and distribution of wealth is a noble activity, or it should be. Providing services and products that improve the lifestyles, health, and productivity of others is worthy of our best efforts. The stewardship of resources, the opportunities to reinvest in communities, the obligation to provide meaningful employment to all people, regardless of race, gender, ethnicity, and social economic status, and the eagerness to care for nature in the process. These are all things about which God is deeply concerned. Business leaders don't buy into the false divide between the secular and the sacred, accepting the notion that what you do Monday through Friday is of no concern to God. Don't bury your talents, but invest them in the kingdom. Wage peace. You too are agents for Christ's love, justice, and mercy. God is deeply concerned with your life's purpose and mission. Let business leaders who come from Whitworth be known for how they leverage business and commerce into restoration and renewal, into true shalom for the customers, employees, and communities they serve. And what is more central to this noble work than studying God and his generous revelation to us through Holy Scripture and through the person of Jesus Christ? Sharing the amazing grace and truth of the gospel and equipping people to respond faithfully to God's call on their lives. Theologians, pastors, and lay leaders, Christian educators, and ministry directors, you are Christ's hands and feet as you nurture, care for, and empower the church to do God's redeeming and restorative work in a broken world. Master of Theology graduates, as you carefully search for a greater understanding of the mysteries of God, as you give comfort to the bereaved, provide divine sustenance to the spiritually hungry, and preach God's grace and truth in a world where both are in precious supply. You co-labor with the Good Shepherd in caring for his flock. You too are agents for Christ's love, justice, and mercy. And God is profoundly concerned with your life's purpose and mission. So wage peace. Bring restoration to Christ's church. Graduates, you are equipped with the experiences, talent, and education to be peacemakers. But peacemaking often comes at a cost. In a world that too often seems to run from peace into the arms of conflict, one in which injustice is often celebrated at the expense of equity, there will be some who will scoff at your attempts, who will throw roadblocks in your way, and who will act to prevent true restoration. When this happens, seek comfort from two promises. First, from our Old Testament reading from Joshua 1, the Lord exhorts you to be strong and courageous, not to be fearful or discouraged, because the Lord will be with you wherever you go. The shalom you will be restoring is the shalom of God. And second, from John 14, Jesus reminds you that he is giving you the gift of shalom, and not as the world might give it, but with the promise too that he will never leave your side. Jesus concludes, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Graduates, be courageous as you bring wholeness and unity into a world in great need. You can do this. This is your responsibility. Graduates of Whitworth University, abide in the full confidence that God has called you here to Whitworth and now sends you into a world yearning for your leadership, a world hungering for shalom, to be humble agents of Christ's love, justice, mercy, and peace. Thank you for your commitments to enter that noble service. So go forth, graduates, and wage peace. And may the peace of Christ, a peace that surpasses all understanding, be yours now and evermore.
Amen. That is a greeting from home. It is such an honor to stand before you this morning. You are all looking great, and thank you for coming. My name is Krishna Gamkosi, also as known as Tina, among most of you. I'm from Malawi, southeastern part of Africa, not Mali or Mali. I started my journey here at Woodworth in the fall of 2010. I came here as a grad student, but I had a very unique experience because for a year, during the day, I was able to go to school for undergraduates when I was getting my corrective classes. I was also on campus more than a regular grad student because of my involvement with the International Students Club Leadership. This experience gave me a lot of wonderful things I can share about. It was so confusing for many people to understand what my graduates, uh, or I would say what my school standing was, or my class standing was, but I was very glad to be known as a pilot. <laughs> when I was asked to address the class of 2013, the first thing that came to my mind was trying to find a thing. I had many great experiences, as, as I've already said, and most of them are really worth sharing. Please fasten your seatbelts. I will go from here to Malawi in particular to a long way. I chose my theme this morning to be living love. I'll share my story and how love has lifted me. I used to come from a family of two. Now I come from a family of a lot. My mother passed away when I was 14 and my dad four years ago. I went to African Bible College for my undergraduate degree. While I was there, I made a mission in family, a young love sufferer. This family said they felt like God was calling them to be part of my journey. They adopted me to their family. Bob and Amy are still serving in Malawi as missionaries right now. They do not have a lot. They still don't. But the greatest gift that they gave me was their hearts and their life. They told me about Whitworth University, and we prayed God wanted me here. Through his provisions and through his faithfulness, I have been able to make it. He's been with me throughout the journey. And today, I am here to testify of what God has done for me through them. And I made their families here too, and their friends. And it is the generous gifts of all these people that I can say, yes, I really made it. Throughout the whole application process to grad school, God put people at different levels, whether it was to advocate for me to the admissions committee or to answer any questions that I had. My correspondence with the university was great. And when I met people while I was here, their friendship and their faithfulness and I would say their service was as great as how we did it in the emails. I was so scared to start living in a different culture. I was so scared to start a new degree. Probably my advisor, John Hengish here, would tell you more how scared I was. <laughs> but I am able to see myself growing into a confident woman and know that the sky is the limit because of the support I've been able to get here. It's been a blessing getting to know most of my classmates inside and outside of the classroom, and it is the same for knowing my professors. Many of my classmates helped me and told me to be a team player while we tried to defeat the many professors who tried to confuse or challenge us. <laughs> I met professors who believed in me and I remember one day when I was starting my new accounting class, even before the lesson was offered, I went to Dr. Lashaw and said, oh, I don't think I'll be able to make it, I need help. But she believed in me and told me that I could do it. Through Whitworth, Whitworth University, I have had a great support system. I felt a sense of belonging to a wonderful community that wanted to help me excel. I treasure the partnerships I've made and many skills and knowledge that I've gained. I know this is true to many of the graduates today. Recently, I also learned from Bob Goff, the author of um, Love Does, 
then you can use your career to love people and fight the injustice and poverty around you. Loving people with what we have is all it takes. What a powerful weapon to change the world around us. While I've been here, people have gone beyond themselves and adopted me into their lives. To me, that is love. I have learned so fast that the best things in life are not things at all, but the people we share life with. Thank you so much for the support, and my goal is to go and give back, support and love others, just like the way I've been loved. Just like me, a lot of you would not be here without the support of your families or your loved ones, and the community as well here at the University. This graduation is the celebration for all those people who might call cheerleaders. On behalf of the graduates, Thank you, family and friends, who are here today and those who are not, for all the support you've given us. Education is the best graduation gift you could ever get. Thank you, faculty and staff in the graduating departments for all the investments you've done for us. In a special way, thank you so much to my new family, Amy and Bob. I wish they were here today. Thank you so much for breathing and living now, for sacrificing your resources. Thank you to my many supporters for your monthly gifts. To my grandparents, the warriors and the sufferers. Thank you for sharing your hearts. Thank you for sharing your resources and even sharing your extended families. <coughs> to my friends, good and bad company, Thank you for the, the encouragement. Thank you for the laughter. Thank you for all the great experiences. The graduating class of 2013, you have been blessed with an education of the mind and the heart from a school whose mission is to equip us to honor God, follow Christ, and serve humanity. My challenge to you today and myself is to go and live love. It takes one soul at a time. Thank you. Go Bucks. <laughs> Greetings, Whitworth faculty, fellow students, staff, and guests. My name is Jeff Reinhardt. I am a pastor of Cairo Community Church in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and also a student, graduating student of the Master of Arts Theology program here at Whitworth. What an honor it is to share some brief thoughts with you about the experience of attaining a graduate degree here at this university. In the middle of March, I received a phone call. This call was from a distinguished Whitworth faculty member, a department head, an author, a professor, a graduate of Fuller Theological Seminary, the recipient of a doctorate in organizational leadership from Gonzaga University, an ordained Presbyterian pastor, and the leader of multiple programs serving the university, the student body, and the community of Spokane. It's the kind of call from a person of distinction that typically would grab one's attention, make one's heart race a little bit faster, and cause a thousand thoughts to scramble through the mind of the one on the receiving end. What could this call possibly be about? The caller, Tim Dolan, reached out to me, his friend, to remind me that I only had a few more days left to order my graduation cap and gown <laughs> before the deadline. And this call again reminded me about the beauty and authenticity of the community we call Whitworth. Whitworth is a with us and not a for us environment. It is culturally saturated with leadership by example ethic, not a leadership by mandate posture. In short, Whitworth is a refreshing representation of kingdom living and values in an otherwise empire-building dominant educational system. Five years ago, I knew little about Whitworth. Admittedly, I had a misguided bias in thinking that advanced theological training only really occurred at places like Princeton, Fuller, Duke, or Harvard. Wanting a more face-to-face -face cohort style of education, I applied to Whitworth out of convenience and proximity. To my great delight, I can say now that there is nowhere else I would have rather been than Whitworth. I finished this program not just with a quiver of what to know facts and figures, but more importantly with new skills on how to think. 
My time in this program has been the most enriching, holistic, spiritual experience of my life. One quickly understands that an education at Whitworth is not confined to classes, units, and diplomas. It is entering into a relationship that lasts a lifetime. This transcends departments. Anyone who has studied at Whitworth has experienced this value, both in undergraduate and graduate education. I was on campus for my very first class with Jerry Sitzer. During our lunch break, I was sitting alone on the patio outside of the library, contemplating Clement, Augustine, and other early church fathers. When a stranger approached me, he sat down and started asking questions about my background, my family, my hopes, and my dreams. I was quite taken aback, honestly. He told me that he was relatively new to Whitworth and that he was a professor in the physics department. He may not remember the encounter, but I can assure you and him that this refreshing introduction to Kamesh Sankara gave me a deeper appreciation for the Whitworth culture and equipped me to seek deeper levels of authentic connections with everyone I meet. We have had professors who are now friends. We can ask Adam Nieder about the deepest and most esoteric elements of Bartian theology and also get his insights on Quentin Tarantino's filmmaking techniques. <laughs> We can have deep discussions with Jerry Sitzer on Ambrose, Athanasius, and the Great Tradition, and also learn tenderly how to process grief. Karen Heller does far more than teach us about Christian spirituality. She engages with us in the deepest recesses of our struggles and doubts, and carries our burdens with us. It's incredible to know that a personal friend, the last several popes, prays for me and for you, too. Time doesn't permit to share details on every faculty member, but something similar could be said about every single one of them. It is rare indeed to combine the obvious academic qualification of these men and women with the hearts and humility of servants. And in this process of learning and becoming, we have had the pleasure of experiencing each other, our fellow students, we come from diverse backgrounds, we are spread out geographically, we are of various ages. We often don't agree on non-essentials, but we are guided to a generous orthodoxy and tolerance with each other. We have become family. We are co-travelers in our obedient journey of faith. We could not have done this without each other, and we are better equipped for our future because of each other. Some of us have even become the best of friends. It's easy to complain about the cost of a Whitworth education, but I think you would all agree that what we leave here with is priceless. So we graduates bear a deeper responsibility beyond studying, beyond papers, beyond research, and beyond grades, now that our current studies are coming to an end. We are challenged and tasked with putting into practice what has been modeled for us in these past years within Whitworth, in the world, outside of Whitworth. Whitworth has played its part admirably in doing what the Apostle Paul insisted, passing on the traditions and core teachings of the Christian faith, and equipping us for service, both in secular and non-secular environments. Whatever our motives may have been when we started at Whitworth, we leave here as transformed, selfless kingdom ambassadors. As Sir Isaac Newton famously said, we are able to see further because we stand on the shoulders of giants. It is up to us now to not only enjoy the view, but to bear the weight of future generations who will find their places on our shoulders. Whatever our future vocations may be, teachers, ministers, administrators, business people, professors, researchers, and others, may God continue to graciously equip us as we become weight bearers. On behalf of the graduates in the MA of Theology program, I say to the Whitworth faculty, both a sincere thank you and an emphatic keep going. What you are doing is valuable and important. To my fellow students, thank you for helping to make me a better disciple of Christ. May God guide us all into deeper community as we seek to live out the Great Commission. And the candidates for the master's degrees, please stand. Mr. President, 
these students have been recommended by the faculty in their graduate programs as commensurate candidates and have been approved by the Board of Trustees for the degrees Master of Arts, Master of Arts in Teaching, Master of Education, Master in Teaching, Master of Business Administration, Master of Business Administration in International Management, and Master of Arts in Theology. Thank you. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and by the State of Washington, I do hereby confer upon you at completion of degree requirements the degrees Master of Arts, Master of Arts in Teaching, Master of Education, Master in Teaching, Master of Business Administration, Master of Business Administration in International Management, and Master of Arts in Theology with all rights and honors appertaining thereto. Congratulations. Will the candidates for the degrees of Master of Arts, Master of Arts in Teaching, and Master of Education rise one row at a time and come forward to the stage? I am pleased to introduce Dr. Roberta Wilbur, Associate Dean for Graduate Studies in Education. Ira S. McMorris, Spokane, Washington. Adam Sean Yoder, Spokane, Washington. <laughs> Teresa Lee Baldwin, Shoreline, Washington. Mary Beth Burns, Spokane Valley, Washington. <laughs> Ernesto Aguilar, Liberty Lake, Washington. Andrea Nicole Bickley, Spokane Valley, Washington. Kelsey Lynn Brown, Spokane, Washington. Brandon Jeremy Byers, Moses Lake, Washington. <laughs> Crystal Ann Clappin, Airway Heights, Washington. <laughs> Heather Michelle Dresbeck, Spokane, Washington. Stephen R. Flagel, Spokane, Washington. <laughs> Megan Marie Goodwin, Shoreline, Washington. <laughs> Miranda Lee Pine, Spokane, Washington. Molly Shaw Johnson, Spokane, Washington. <laughs> Joni L. Justison, Spokane, Washington. <laughs> Patricia J. Canberg, Spokane, Washington. Ryan Patterson Marshall, Spokane, Washington. (laughs) 
Brandon James Martin, Sweet Home Martin. Chandra Darn Martin, Colville, Washington. <laughs> Phil Maya, Cheney, Washington. <laughs> Emily Ross Morris, Spokane, Washington. Heather Michelle McCaslin, San Jose, California. <laughs> Julie C. McGowan, Spokane, Washington. John Andrew Odell, Spokane, Washington. Brian Jameson Spragans, Liberty Lake, Washington. <laughs> T. Houston Stokes, Spokane, Washington. <laughs> Carissa Lynn Strope, Preston, Connecticut. Tammy Angel Ferringer, Caldwell, Washington. <laughs> Richard, Richard Lee Thomas, Tico, Washington. Robert John, John Towley III, Spokane, Washington. <laughs> Carrie Noreen Chupas, Spokane, Washington. <laughs> Hannah Jo Wizenen, Spokane, Washington. Tiffany Trebu Zook, Spokane, Washington. Will the candidates for the degree of Mastery Teaching come forward at this time? I am pleased to introduce Dr. David Cherry, Director of the Mastery Teaching Program. Christopher Brian Bachman, Spokane Valley, Washington. Marissa Lynn Balkan, Spokane, Washington. Christina Marie Benitez, Salem, Oregon. Christopher Charles Berger, Nine Mile Falls, Washington. <laughs> Nikki Lee Bernard, Spokane Valley, Washington. <laughs> Benjamin True Broadbent, Spokane, Washington.
Christoph, Benjamin, Boltema, Anatolia, Turkey. Kate Lynn Clementich, Othello, Washington. Andrew Charles Durgan, Spokane, Washington. Jessica Lee Erickson, Centerville, Utah. Megan Elizabeth Fraser, Kalispell, Montana. Allison Rose Geesland, Mount Vernon, Washington. Jennifer Audrey Grassley, Boulder, Colorado. Colin Taylor Grove, Spokane, Washington. Christina Harrison, Spokane, Washington. Sydney Nicole Hoffnagel, Spokane, Washington. Nicole Lee Jansen, Auburn, Washington. Elizabeth Nicole Jones, North Pole, Alaska. David Lance Levitt, Warden, Washington. James Kiyoshi Mitsuyasu, Edmund Paul, Washington. Lauren, excuse me, Jennifer Lauren Morris. Spokane, Washington. <laughs> Melinda Ann Kalani Olson, Beaverton, Oregon. <laughs> Ruben Alexander Otero, Spanaway, Washington. Catherine Dorothy Potaski, Puyallup, Washington. Nathaniel Robert Sawhill, Spokane, Washington. Miranda Dawn Schmidt, Ellensburg, Washington. Stephanie Michelle Sim, Spokane, Washington. <laughs> Kyle Jerome Sabota, Stanfield, Oregon.
Sarah Jane Whitmore, Bozeman, Montana. Christina Camposi Banda, Lilongwe, Malawi. Marissa Rose Florio, Spokane, Washington. David A.C., Spokane, Washington. <laughs> Isaac David Hedden, Spokane Valley, Washington. <laughs> Kay Mayetta Orlacher, Spokane, Washington. Ronald V. Kramer, OMAC, Washington. <laughs> Allison Lene Moses, Irrigan, Oregon. <laughs> Jeffrey Tudor Reinhardt, Hayden, Idaho. Cheryl Lynn Robertson, Spokane, Washington. <laughs> Melissa Lynn Stoddard, Spokane, Washington. May the road rise up to meet him. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, even in our Father's house, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen.